Hi, Alan here. I'm spinning up a series of short-form videos covering hardware topics from the 90s and early aughts, such as the GPU, CPU, chipsets, and RAM. In our first video, we're going to talk about why 3D accelerated graphics look so much better than software rendering. The key technology here is bilinear filtering, and it has to do with how the textures are rendered. GeoQuake's really nice because I can switch uh, how it renders and switch back um, really easily. So this is the 3D accelerated version, but they give me a feature where I can tell it to use a more primitive form of rendering, which is called nearest neighbor. So you can see that the texture is now really, really blocky, especially the closer I get. Um, but in general, like if I'm at an angle, it'll always be pretty blocky as well. What's happening here is the renderer is taking the texture and it's putting onto this polygon. So nearest neighbor, it's just gonna take the pixel that's gonna render, map it to a location on the texture, and it's just gonna find the nearest pixel, which is represented by black dots on our diagram. It's just gonna find the nearest one and use that color. And that's a really big problem around edges where there's like a color transition because it's really just gonna pick one or the other and it creates this blockiness. And so the solution to this is by a linear filtering, as I said, which they call just linear here. So the idea here is instead of just using one uh, texel, I'm gonna find the four closest ones and average them together. What this does is kind of create a gradient between the edges and you see this very smooth transition. Sometimes it feels a little bit too smooth, but either way, it looks a lot better. Now the problem about bilinear is this is really hard for the CPU. CPUs aren't that good at doing things in parallel. So it helps to have a 3D hardware accelerator that can do this. I'm gonna cover one more technique that was used and it's not necessarily like unique to uh, hardware rendering, but it came about at about the same time as 3D acceleration and it's pretty important so I think I should cover it. So this uh, technique is called myth mapping. And the idea is I don't just have the texture, I also have all these little smaller versions of the textures. And what that allows me to do is when I'm rendering something far away, instead of using the big one and like doing this bilinear filtering, like averaging stuff, like it might not even be the right texels that I'm really averaging together. I'll just use the smaller version and just pick a point from that. And it's faster, but it also just looks better. And so like right now we have it off. And if you look into the distance on the floor, it's really this kind of like garbagey, like static interference pattern, especially when I'm like up here, yeah. And it's just kind of gross and, and annoying. So I'm gonna go here and turn my myth mapping on, myth map nearest. So now when I do this, it's pretty smooth. You don't see the, the interference or static at all. So that wraps up our first episode of Smug and Play Explains. If you like this video, you'll probably like our other content around PC games and hardware, so please drop us a like and subscribe. See you next time on Smug and Play.